who have uh, spent uh, time, you know, well, let me back up. We talk about sicknesses and things like that. Of course, there's the pandemic and everything in the world going on right now, but, but epidemics have, are not a new thing. Uh, in fact, they were, they were very common in the world up until, you know, the rise of antibiotics, the modern age, things like that. It's kind of unusual that we, have de- that we haven't dealt like sickness like we do today in, in such a long time. Um, and indeed, historically, what Christians would do in times of sickness, in times of plague and epidemic, things like that, is they were the ones who would actually go to cities, like go to the places where people were sick in order to care for them. And of course, they wouldn't take unnecessary risks, but they would go even at their own risk to care for those who were sick because everyone else was running away. And it made such an impact on the people around them uh, to see that Christians were the ones who would actually go and care for these people, even at risk to their own health, right? This is what we do, is we make the world new along with Jesus, and we show the world God's love and care and kindness in the process. So, you know, when it comes to what we take home from this, right, we work in order to show the world who God is. There's lots of things I could say. This is the sort of topic that lends itself to a great generic Um, application for your life today, right? Because I could say, go love your neighbor, right? Uh, Go serve your family. Um, Go go share the gospel, right? Because these things are all really good. These are good works indeed that endure to eternity. Jesus, here's a really cool thing in in this passage that it's easy to skip over, but when Jesus says, here's what you do, work for food that endures to eternity, he's telling us that indeed the good things we do today somehow endure even into the new world Jesus has created. When we work in Jesus' name, when we work by the power of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of that work, the good food we work for, endures to eternal life, Jesus says. And that means when we go and we love our neighbor in Jesus' name, somehow that endures to eternal life. Somehow the effect of that work continues in in ways we can't imagine. When we pray prayers to God in faith, in the name of Jesus Christ, those prayers somehow have an eternal impact. And this is kind of a mystery to us because we can't quite get how this works. Um, But it's true. He says, work for food that endures to eternal life. That means the food that we work for endures to eternal life. And Jesus says, I am the bread of life, right? So this is the food. This is the fruit is faith in Jesus Christ. When we do something that points to faith in Jesus Christ, it endures forever. And when we sing, for example, just a few minutes ago, sing the praises of God, those things, it kind of echoes into eternity. When we write songs or create artwork to to show the world who God is, those songs will keep being sung. It's kind of cool. When we heal, that healing is the beginning of the full healing Jesus provides. That fruit endures to eternal life. I mean, the most obvious kind of if, if this is still hard to get through your mind, the most kind of obvious example you can think of is when you share the gospel and someone hears the good news of Jesus Christ and, and believes, then you see that person in the new creation and they're still around. And that fruit endures to eternal life. And like I said, this is kind of a mysterious thing, but Jesus says, work for the food that endures to eternal life. And so the things that we do today somehow persist. And whatever that is we do, in the name of Jesus and with the purpose of pointing people to the Lord, which, by the way, we've said is all that we do, that endures. That gives a lot of significance even to the small things we do. Because whether it's big or it's small, it lasts. It's kind of hard to get our minds around that because according to our worldly eyes, what we see today, nothing lasts, right? We do work. I can earn money to buy food for my family this week, and they're going to eat it all. (laughs) <laughs> and next week I'll have to work again to buy some more food for them. Uh, if you've seen my hands this morning, they're kind of like weird and gray and dark because I was fixing my car two days ago, um, and I've scrubbed them dozens of times, and, and you know that dirt just doesn't come off. Um, I was fixing my car two days ago because a part broke, because things break, that's our experience. Do you know I was fixing my car two days ago? Because a week ago I was also fixing my car, and I saw something else that broke in the process. <laughs> When we fix something, it breaks. When we build something, eventually it falls over. When we form relationships, right? Friendships, uh, marriages, or anything else, those relationships don't go on their own. They need to be tended to as well. 
And it seems like the work we do doesn't last, and, and often I think the way we feel is we're just kind of doing the best we can to tread water, right? Keep our heads above the water and, and hope that nothing goes too bad because we've only got so much effort to give and there's always so much work to do. But when we work for the food that endures to eternal life, what Jesus is pointing us to here, the food that shows the reality of the bread of life who is Jesus Christ to our neighbors, to our family, to our friends, in our world, that work endures forever. The fruit of that work endures forever. We can do things that actually really last and never break, never fall over, never fade away. That is so cool. So like I said, how do we apply this? What do we go home and do with this this week? Uh, I could say a lot because I could say things like, um, you know, go share the gospel, go be a neighborhood missionary, uh, go serve your neighbor, care for your family, all that. And that's all good to do, okay? Uh, that's fine. Uh, that's, that's great, in fact. Um, but I want to share something kind of specific today because I think when we think about this work of healing that Jesus does, this work of creating, giving life, right, and leading people to eternal life, the life we give today, uh, like I said, the medical stuff Christians do, this all points to the life that Jesus gives. And I think it's actually appropriate today to talk about uh, this thing that's been happening for a year and a half, COVID-19, the pandemic, um, it's kind of related. Because when we work to heal, that's a good work that endures into eternity. That's kind of cool. And it's good to talk about this too, because of course it's been in the news, and I'm sure you guys have seen the news this week, right? I mean, we're, we're talking about uh, the CDC says now we should be wearing masks again uh, indoors, even if you're vaccinated. If you live in an area with high transmission of COVID-19, which by the way, Allen County is, um, that's their recommendation, right? And of course, people are talking about, uh, oh man, should we make this mandate to no longer make it an option? Uh, people are talking about uh, vaccines, you know, whether people have or haven't gotten them, and then even talking about things like booster shots, and I don't think that's in the plans yet, but it's always kind of floating out there. Maybe we'll all have to go get another shot. Here's the thing about all that. You know, I get it. <laughs> None of us like to do that. <laughs> the masks and stuff we, we wear, those are really annoying and they're uncomfortable. Um, I don't like wearing it. I know you don't too. I think when we hear all this stuff, COVID-19 this week, uh, if you're anything like me, your reaction to that was something kind of like, uh, you know, here we go again. I really hope not. It felt like we were getting past that and now here it is again, right? Uh, let me encourage you this week. Whatever happens with that, whatever comes next, uh, when you go to the grocery store and you wear that mask, see it as a good work that endures to eternal life because by doing that, you're showing God's love and care for the world that you're preserving and protecting the life and health of your neighbors and your friends and your family and the people around you, right? Whether it's required or not, care for those people. It's a good work that endures to eternal life, even putting on that dumb thing <laughs> that you don't want to do, and it's uncomfortable and itchy. And, you know, I, I found out I sweat a lot on my lips and chin uh, during this year and a half. But it's a good work that endures to eternal life. And, uh, and by the way, too, you know, people talk about vaccines and things like that. And, and, and I know a bunch of people have gotten that, and some are not sure still. Um, I would encourage you to do that and see it as a good work that endures to eternal life because we're protecting the people around us and caring for them, protecting their health and safety by doing our best to make sure that we won't get sick, right? And by the way, I know that there's a lot of people, if you haven't done that, people have lots of questions or concerns. I would be happy to talk to you about any of that. Uh, I know some people are concerned, you know, sometimes from a theological or kind of a moral, there's something they're worried about. Uh, let me tell you, I'm your pastor. If you trust me, I think you're okay to get that from a moral and theological sense. <laughs> if you have any specific concerns, I would be happy to talk to you about that. But you should not worry that you're being unfaithful or untrusting or something like that towards God by getting that shot. Um, also, let me say too, uh, and I'm not going to say a lot about this because I'm not a medical person. I know there's folks who are concerned about safety and things like that. I'll say two things. Like I say, one, I'm not a medical person, so I'm not going to actually give you medical advice. <laughs> but everything I've read, it looks like they're safe, as safe as everything else that we take, all the other medicines, the other vaccines we get. That wouldn't stop me. But I'll say, if you're really worried about, there is someone you have in your life, I'm sure already, who you trust with your own life and the safety of your body, right? Your doctor, talk to that person and ask them. Because there are some people who have medical reasons not to get that. So I'm, that's why I'm not giving medical advice. But 
If you're worried about that, and it's just, I'm not sure it's safe, well, talk to that person you already trust with your health and see what they have to say, all right? So I'd encourage you to do that. And these things, again, not just because, not because anyone's telling us to, uh, not because even, not, not even because I'm telling you to, but because when we do good things that are meant to show God's love and care, when we protect and preserve life because God is a life giver and he is a healer and that's what he's doing in this world to bring new life into the world. And he's fighting all the consequences of sin, including disease, including death, right? When we do these things in Jesus' name, they last. They're good works that somehow point our neighbors, point our family and friends to the fact that God cares for them. And they see that God cares for them because we care for them, right? And, you know, I want to end. This is a really great uh, quote. Uh, Martin Luther wrote a letter in 1527. There was the plague in Wittenberg. You might have seen this. It was it, like it made the rounds about a year and a half ago, uh, back when the pandemic started, because Martin Luther has some good advice, right? But, but like I said, before the modern age, epidemics were common. Um, the plague, you know, like the plague plague, the Black Death, that was in Europe for hundreds of years. In 1527, it came to Wittenberg. And of course, what people would do is very often they would run away, right? I, I, if, if they get away from the area, you know, I'm not going to get sick. Some actually will read uh, from what Luther said. Uh, some didn't, and, and it's kind of surprising uh, to see how what, what, what happened then happens now. Um, but so Martin Luther is giving advice and basically says if, you, if, 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 you, if people need you to care for them, do it, right? Uh, but do everything you can to keep yourself healthy. And so I'll just, I'll read this and I think it's a great way to end this and to think about how we can care for our neighbors in Jesus' name in a time of disease. And so uh, Martin Luther, uh, he's talking about what, 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 what is how people... M- let me, put it, let me put it the right way. He's talking about how people um, are not having a good reaction uh, to this plague uh, epidemic that's come to Wittenberg. And so he says, uh, some people, they sin uh, in this way. They are much too rash and reckless. They're tempting God and disregarding everything which might counteract death and the plague. They disdain the use of medicines. They do not avoid places and persons infected by the plague, but they lightheartedly make sport of it and wish to prove how independent they are. They say, it's God's punishment, this plague. And if he wants to protect them, well, then he can do so without medicines or our carefulness. Martin Luther says, that is not trusting God, but tempting him. Therefore, here's what I'll do, Luther says, I shall ask God mercifully to protect us, and then I shall fumigate, help purify the air, administer medicine, and take it Uh, and take it myself. I shall avoid persons and places where my presence is not needed in order not to become become contaminated and thus perchance infect and pollute others. If my neighbor needs me, however, I shall not avoid that place or person, but go freely. See, this is a God-fearing faith because it is neither brash nor foolhardy and does not tempt God. Saying, keep yourself safe, right? But when your neighbor needs you, go. Don't be afraid of disease, Don't ignore it. Because all of these, right, point us to the life-giving power of God that he calls us to do in his name. Amen. Let's stand. And we're going to continue now by um, saying what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. And as we think about this, right, the good work that God does in us and through us and that he calls us to do, in his name, the work we accomplish in God's name that endures to eternity. Uh, I think we can think about the first article of the creed because really what we're talking about is God the creator and what he has created us to be, which is his image in the world so that not just our family and friends, the humans around us can look at humanity and now the church and see Jesus and see God, but even the world, right, in a way back in Genesis so that the animals the fish, the birds, the, the, the creatures on the land can look at humans and see an image of their God. So uh, we think about that as we confess what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Uh, the words are on the screen. I invite you to say with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. Third day, he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Go ahead and take a seat. Uh, we'll continue now with our time of uh, offering and our announcements. Our offering as we continue in worship to God, we give back to him a portion of what he has already blessed us with. Uh, it, it's a good way for us to remember that God is creator and he does give us all that we have, even though we work for it, right? Uh, but indeed, he calls us to give back to him as a way of trusting him uh, that he will care for us uh, even with 10% of all we have and, and make. Uh, a couple announcements. There's a few really cool things happening this week. On Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, August 3rd, from about 4.30 to 6.30, there is um, our back-to-school picnic, co-hosting with Sunshine Christian Academy. This is really, really cool. Um, Carl Rankin counted up. There's, what, uh, over 130 people, parents and students signed up to go to that picnic uh, who are all already here in our building. So it's really cool to be able to get in touch with those people. There's 30-ish uh, people from our congregation signed up, so maybe all of you are already. I don't know. It's <laughs> or most of you. But that'll be really neat. I invite you to do that. Uh, our plan is to be outside in the front, um, like I said, about 4.30 to 6.30, but there's times to set up and work outside of that. So if you want to help out, talk to Carl Rankin. He's sitting right here. Um, this is also really neat because on Friday uh, or Thursday, we finalized and shared with those Sunshine parents the details of that tuition voucher program that, that we want to try out um, as a kind of a unique way to encourage families at Sunshine to also develop uh, and sustain a life of faith here through Southwest Lutheran Church. So I'm hoping people have lots of questions and they're really interested in that on Tuesday. And um, we'll see how it goes. But there's a lot I'm excited about. Uh, so I think that's going to be really great. Um, if you want to help out, like I said, or just show up from 4.30 to 6.30, either is welcome. I have another announcement, too, that uh, was shared with us by email. Dart Ball is, um, is it start? Let's see. Is Mike around? Uh, is that starting for the year, or, or, or what are they doing? Okay. 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 Okay, so there's a dartball tournament in about uh, three weeks, I think, and uh, as a warm-up. So if you want to check it out, um, you can talk to Mike Greener, and he's got uh, he's got the details. Uh, Carl. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we can do that. Um, so Carl, he asked, he said, one of the, the, the hard parts of going and being part of church outreach is, is you just, what do I do and what do I say? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. So uh, he asked me to write up something kind of, what do I do? Which is really just be there and be friendly, right? But there's more details, and we're going to share that with you uh, in a paper form as you leave today, and um, we'll email it too. Um, and it's also, if you're wondering more information about that voucher program for your own information, or in case you're there on Tuesday and someone asks, there's information there too. So it's a cool thing. So we'll be sharing that today as we go. Uh, any other announcements before we move on? I don't see any more. Okay. Well, then let's go on. Let's continue with our time of prayer. And as we get started, I will say we remember as we come together today, uh, we pray to our Father in heaven. We know that he hears our prayers and answers them. And uh, he hears us as a loving father, hears his beloved children, uh, wanting to give us all good things. And so let me ask, are there any prayer requests from anyone gathered here today? Prayers for uh, thanks, prayers for help or healing, uh, prayers for, for needs uh, or comfort? Yeah.
Okay. We'll pray for a family in conflict that the Lord would um, help them through that time. Other prayer requests? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. We will say thanks for Carol and Don Menzi and their 60th wedding anniversary. Other prayer requests? Yes, Anna. Keep the world healthy. Okay, and Ruth? Well, thank you. And we have to read the Bible to know about God. I think that's pretty true. Okay, so we'll pray to, that the Lord would keep the world healthy and, uh, and help us to read our Bibles. That sounds good to me. Other prayer requests? Yes. Oh, way over in the corner. Sorry. For Raiden. We'll pray for uh, Raiden for uh, healing as he's uh, fighting cancer. And they say? Yeah. We'll say, and we'll say thanks that you're back, and they say. Uh, here and I don't know how long till you go back to school, but we've got you this week, so we're thankful you're, for your presence with us, and we'll say thanks also for the good um, internship. Is that what you call it, or experience, leadership development project thing you did this summer? We'll say thanks for for that, and for his birthday today. That's right. How old are you, Naysay? You turned one? I don't believe that. 21. That's cool. Well, congratulations. All right. Other prayer requests? I'll check the corners this time. All right. I don't see any more. So let's pray for the people of God and for all people according to their needs. And I invite you now to pray with me. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for this day and we give you thanks for all of your gifts and blessings. Lord, um, you are God the creator. And yet the way you have chosen to do your work uh, in sustaining and recreating this world now that it has fallen is, is amazing. Lord, you work in us and through us. You put us here in the beginning to represent you to the world. And now, Lord, you call us uh, to con continue in that good work and now to work for food which endures to eternal life, uh, both for ourselves and others, so that we and others may know Jesus, the bread of life, and that we may be secure in faith. So, Lord, we, uh, well, we thank you uh, for showing uh, yourself to us in that way. We thank you for giving us this, this wonderful work of, of, of sharing your good news and of loving and caring and serving. What could be better? Lord, we, we confess, though, that we are sorry that we don't always do that. Uh, Lord, sometimes our hearts aren't in the right place. Uh, sometimes our minds, uh, sometimes we, we do the things we shouldn't, uh, we know we shouldn't, and we, we don't do the things we know we should. And, and in so many ways, Lord, we are sorry for the ways that we don't uh, truly reflect you into the world. And so we ask that you would forgive us for that. We know that you do through the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, and we ask now that you would give us strength, uh, courage, and will to do the good work which you have set in front of us, to love and care, our neighbor, care for our neighbors, to love and care for our world, to do everything we do to the Lord. And Lord, indeed, uh, to do the great work which you have called us to, which is to know the one whom you have sent to us, your son Jesus, and to take part in the work he has given us to help in making things new as he is making things new. So Lord, we ask that you would give us strength for that work. We thank you for all the gifts you have given to us. We give you thanks for family, uh, for marriages, for relationships, especially for Don and Carol for their 60th wedding anniversary, Lord, and we, we, uh, we thank you for all of the marriages uh, and the relationships that you have given to us. Um, sustain us uh, in those marriages and in friendships and in, in every human relationship where we have the opportunity to show love and care to others. Lord, we give you thanks also for time with family. We give you thanks for the opportunity to, um, to be a blessing to those around us. We give you thanks for our church family, Lord, with whom we can do life together. And so we give you thanks also for life, uh, for birthdays, for Nese, and also for Jessica and Amelia. 
We say thank you, Lord, for the gift of life which you have given to us. Lord, we give you thanks also uh, for Nase that he is back. Uh, he had a good uh, summer at his leadership development program, um, and we pray that you would continue to bless him as he follows you and help him to put the things he has learned and the ways he has grown to good use, uh, both as he's here and as he returns to college soon. Lord, thank you for all of your gifts. We ask also that you would care for us and all people according to our needs, and we know that you do, but we pray especially first for the lost, for those who don't know you. Lord, send us to love and serve and share the good news of Jesus with them, and we pray that you would work in their hearts through the Holy Spirit to bring them to faith in Jesus Christ. And we pray especially for Aaron, for Edis, to know Jesus. Lord, we pray for our ministry partners, Sunshine Christian Academy, uh, for the students, for the teachers, for the families, for the administrators as well, that you would bless them in the work that they are doing to raise those young children to know Jesus. Lord, we ask you that you would uh, bless us uh, as we are seeking to be good ministry partners with them. Uh, help us to cooperate with them in that work. And Lord, we also ask for your um, uh, blessing upon the event we're having this Tuesday as we get to spend some time serving and loving um, those families in Jesus' name. Lord, help us to get to know them, help us to serve them, help us to make friends. And Lord, uh, we pray that you would work through that uh, ultimately to make disciples, people who know Jesus. Uh, so that, Lord, we pray that you would uh, use that as uh, event as a start to, um, to bring uh, families, uh, young people, and others to, into the fellowship of your people here at Southwest Lutheran Church. Lord, we ask uh, that you would uh, care for us in our other needs. Uh, for a family in conflict, uh, Lord, uh, give them peace in their home. Lord, we pray for uh, all the decisions we make and for wisdom and strength in these things, understanding and guidance. Lord, we pray especially for Julie and Janelle, Brandon and Mitchell and Shannon, for Robert, Haley, Chloe, John, Madison, Mackenzie, Parker, Derek, Drew, Andy, Jay, and Todd. Lord, we pray for these and for all of us uh, that you would just guide us as we live our lives in your name. Lord, we pray for our country, um, especially as we're fighting COVID-19 and it seems to be uh, coming back Lord, give us uh, the strength and the endurance, um, the patience uh, to continue fighting this and to do it diligently. Uh, Lord, help us to uh, do all that we can to end that disease. And uh, Lord, keep us safe from it. We pray that you would heal our community, heal our state, our nation, and our world so that we may be free from COVID-19. Lord, finally, we pray for your help and healing hands um, for all those who are hurting physically and mentally and spiritually as well. Lord, we pray for Paku with cancer. We pray for Violet and her team as they continue to recover from COVID. We pray for Annette. Uh, we pray for Mark and Roz uh, recovering from COVID. We pray for Lissa, Martha, Annette, and Tanya. We pray for Raiden fighting cancer. And for all people, Lord, whether it's injury or illness, whether it is uh, cancers or other ailments, um, and Lord, for those suffering from anxiety, depression, addictions, and other mental illnesses. We pray, we pray for your healing because we know that you are the great physician. We know that you are doing this work in the world even now. Uh, you have promised to make all things new on the last day, and you call us to be part of healing and making things new today. So we pray that you would bless us in that work and give us the healing and strength we need uh, to be your people and your image in the world. Lord, finally, we pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones um, to death. Help us always remember that Jesus died, but he rose from the dead. And so in times of mourning and grief, Lord, give us patience. Give us hope in Jesus' name. We pray all these things, and we also pray for the prayers and petitions that are on our hearts right now, and we pray these silently. We pray in Jesus' name, and now we pray the prayer which he has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, we continue now with our time of uh, celebrating the Lord's Supper. And we believe that as we do this today, Jesus really does come to be with us. Uh, we do receive him as we eat and drink this bread and wine. We eat and drink his body and blood. And that's good news because Jesus is the bread of life and whoever receives him has eternal life. And because we believe that Jesus is really present here, it's important for us to examine ourselves before we come to the altar. And so we ask four questions as we always do, and they are, number one, do we believe that we are sinful and we deserve the full consequence of sin, which is death and separation from God? But do we also believe that Jesus is truly the Son of God who has come into this world to take our sins upon himself and he died on the cross and rose again for our forgiveness and salvation? so that believing in him today, we can receive him rightly. Do we also believe that we really do uh, eat and drink the body and blood of Jesus here? He comes to us as we eat and drink today. Uh, We recognize that he is with us in this time. And do we then finally, do we commit ourselves to live for Christ and to live according to his will? And we make that commitment, uh, knowing that we are not perfect people. Uh, Indeed, we sin and most likely will continue to. Uh, But this is a meal for people who are not perfect because here Jesus comes to us to deliver God's grace to us, to forgive our sins and to strengthen us for life following him. So if we could believe if you can say yes to those four questions and you are prepared to receive the Lord's Supper today, if that's not you, if you've not yet been baptized, if you've not yet, uh, or if you you don't agree with these things, that's okay. Um, I would love to uh, say a prayer of blessing for you if you come up with your hands over your chest. And so with that said, let's hear our Lord's word. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The peace of the Lord be with you. You are welcome at the Lord's table.
our Lord has come to us once again today to deliver God's grace to us through his body and blood, which we have received today. And this is good news, that Jesus is doing his work of healing, restoring, and strengthening in us today so that we can better reflect the image of God into the world, so that we can show our neighbors, our friends, our family, even uh, in a strange way, our pets, who their creator is. And we know our creator because we've met him. His name is Jesus. So now may, our e- may the eating and drinking of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, now strengthen and preserve you, body and soul, in true faith to everlasting life. Depart in peace. Amen. Please pray with me. Father in heaven, we give you thanks once again for this day, and we give you thanks for all of your gifts and blessings. Thank you for bringing us together in your name and serving us today. Lord, we know that you have given us a great gift of faith, uh, the great gift, uh, the bread of life, uh, who is your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to receive him rightly today, and now that we have received your gifts, Lord, help us to go and use them. Help us to love and serve our friends, our family, and our neighbors. Help us to do those good works whose fruit lasts into eternity. Help us to uh, protect and preserve the lives of our friends, our family, and our neighbors by um, taking care of ourselves and others during this time of illness. Lord, do that good work in us so that we may do good work uh, for our neighbors and the world. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I invite you to stand and sing with us as we sing one last song. For your glory, Lord.
Well, I want to say thank you for joining us in worship today. If you're watching online later this afternoon, again, we're sorry this didn't work out, but we're glad that you could, uh, could see and, uh, and hear our songs and, and, uh, and learn with us as well. So, um, hey, it's good to be gathered in the spirit uh, with the people of God. So uh, let's hear the blessing of the Lord for us today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord now look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let's go in peace and serve the Lord.